Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So, as you can see behind me, a really nice pile of scrap material. I'm just about to load it up into my car. Hopefully it all fits. And before you go to the scrapyard, uh, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about how you can separate this stuff very quickly, um, just to maximize your profit and kind of help you get as much into your vehicle when you're bringing it to the scrapyard to maximize your profit um, and kind of show you how I get all the weight I do into my car. So a couple things I do want to talk about. One of my subscribers asked me a great question uh, about what I do with my screws and my nails and my bolts that I take or get from all my appliances. And just to show you right here, I throw them into a container. These together are 20 pounds worth of screws and nuts and nails. Um, and the nice thing is for me and the scrapyard and anyone going to the scrapyard is that you don't want to keep them loose. I've seen several people have them in a pail or a bucket and it's tipped or uh, loose. And that's just, a, you know, it's, it's uh, pleading for a flat tire uh, or asking for a flat tire. Maybe not for you, but for someone else. So please make sure when you go to the scrapyard with your screws and nails and things, you have them in a closed container so they don't have the potential of falling out and causing damage to anyone's car. Um, and I know the scrapyards really appreciate that as well. Um, what I've done is I've kind of sorted my stuff based on the material. As you can see on this side, there is a lot of steel. Right now in Canada, steel is going for about $259 a ton, which is amazing. I've never seen it at that price. So if you have steel, it's a great thing to start collecting and bring in. Um, it's easy to find. And as you can see here, um, I love finding microwaves because there's some goodies inside of them. But after I'm done taking out the parts, it is great for storage. So I can get a lot of steel in this microwave. This actually, I just weighed it, weighs 65 pounds worth of different pieces of steel. As well, the dishwasher racks you see back here, uh, it's also a good kind of carriage, so I can throw a lot of things in there, uh, steel, um, and also your computer towers. Uh, I've got a couple back here, I've already taken out the guts to them. They are now just gonna be steel, so I can throw a bunch of stuff in there as well to maximize or minimize my um, space used up and maximize my weight. Um, unfortunately, there are a couple of bulky things that don't weigh a lot. Uh, these I find a lot on job sites. Um, there is usually copper wire that goes around these and the electricians usually throw them in the garbage. So I like taking them out because I don't like seeing it go into the landfill. But there is, as you can see right below me here, uh, a bunch of tin uh, or shredded um, uh, steel plates. Very, very heavy. A steel sink. Uh, I've already taken the brass out and I've separated that. I have the uh, drum or the tank for an air compressor that's solid steel. So I want to make sure I have all my steel together. Um, and again, it's a great price, $259 uh, a ton in Canada right now. Um, so definitely a good thing because it does not take a lot of steel to add weight. Um, so that's the first thing. In the middle here, I have all my electronics. As you can see, I have a flat screen TV. I have a large uh, TV right there. This TV actually weighs 75 pounds. It was given to me by uh, a student uh, to scrap. So I thank you for that. I have a small little co computer monitor here. Um, and all three of these combined at a scrap here, I'm going to get paid uh, electronic price and it's calculated by weight. So 75 pounds, this one is 35 pounds, that one is uh, 14 pounds. Um, but before I take those in, there's actually a lot of goodies inside. There's some gold in the flat screen that I just did a video on, so uh, when that comes out, please check that out. The TV, same thing, there's some copper, as well as this monitor. Uh, these items actually came right out of this monitor. As you can see, some nice number two copper, a bell that has copper inside of that. So I do want to make sure I take this out because I'm going to get a lot more money for my copper. And the nice thing is I can still bring the rest of the monitor in and get paid per weight. So the whole thing will stay out of the landfill, which is awesome. 
Um, and you know, I want to make sure I clean my copper and take that out because copper right now is at an all time high as well. And I will get to that in a second. Uh, also circuit boards, these circuit boards I can bring in with, uh, it's classified as e-waste. Um, because I don't have a lot, they will probably just throw it right in with my TVs or electronics because there's not much. But if you have a lot of it, um, you want to check with your scrapyard and ask them if they will uh, categorize it by the precious metals on side of it uh, or on it. This one, there is no real precious metal. There is no copper. I've already taken that off. Uh, there's no silver. There's no gold. So this would actually be classified as low grade board. Something like from a flat screen that has gold strips, that would be classified as high grade, uh, and you're gonna get a little bit more for that. But unfortunately, at a scrapyard like mine in Sarnia, they lump them all together, and it's a flat rate, so I don't get much for those. So I definitely take off the aluminum heat sinks off these, the copper spools, um, and the silver contact boxes, because when I sort those, I'm gonna get more money for those metals um, when I put them together instead of on a circuit board. All right, so e-waste. The next one, as you can see right over here, these are steel. They are um, the long uh, lights, the tubes. Um, and I actually took the ballasts off. These ballasts are their own price at the scrapyard. And what you wanna make sure, they're I think they're about 15 cents a pound. And what you wanna make sure is that they say on them, no PCBs, okay? so. Right there on the label, it says no PCBs. Um, and even on the website, Zubix, I was checking today, it says um, ballasts in bracket, no PCBs, 15 cents a pound, those that have PCBs. Uh, and there's not many because uh, they've gotten rid of those um, due to um, the health risks. Anything that was made after 1980, no PCBs. Anything before, there might still be. So there might be some still hanging around. I think they're about three, four cents a pound. And you definitely do not want to open the ballast for the copper in them if they have PCBs, okay? And I actually just did a video on if it's worth taking the ballast apart for the copper or not. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. It's amazing how much copper is inside, but it's also amazing how much mess. So like I said, interesting, go check that out if you want to, okay? So ballast, 15 cents a pound in Canada right now. Okay, and as I said, the frame from it is steel. There was some wire that went through it too. Uh, I collect that um, and it is actually currently right now, um, that wire uh, it, uh, is about $1.83 a pound because it is 60% um, uh, copper recovery. So I'm actually just gonna take it up to the camera right here. This comes off of it. As you can see inside there is uh, copper. I could bring this in and what they look at for copper recovery is how much copper recovery is inside the uh, wire and how much plastic to copper ratio. Because there is only one strand of plastic on this, it would be 60% copper recovery, which means I'm going to get $1.83 a pound. If there was two layers, it would be $1.23 a pound. However, this wire because it is thicker copper, it's actually gonna be worth more uh, taking the time to strip it. Um, this kind of wire, I can't use my uh, wire stripper. I actually use a, a hand stripper. It's very easy to take off. But if I take that off, I'm gonna get, uh, this is number two copper, so $3.50 Canadian a pound. So it's well worth it uh, and it adds up nice. So again, this would be as is 60% copper recovery. Um, and I actually do have a video also on showing you what types of copper wire to strip, which ones not to. There's a, I do a whole experiment on that and hopefully help you maximize your profit. So if you're interested in that one, go check that one out. Okay, and with that being said, I also have batteries. Uh, I'm gonna take these batteries in. Um, I also have some household batteries. Batteries, uh, because of the lead, you wanna make sure these stay out of the landfill. All of these batteries will be lumped together. You will get a battery price or uh, because of the lead inside. Um, it's about seven to 10 cents a pound, I think, or um, which is better than nothing. And again, environmentally, definitely wanna make sure these are diverted from the landfill and our water system. Okay, so batteries, gonna bring these in. And the big ones like this, 
this is four and a half pounds, okay? So they do not take much to add up weight. Um, you know, we all have batteries from our household uh, electronics and things. You know, I've seen some people throw them in recycle bins and that's a scary thing. So please, if you have batteries, make sure you can drop them off or try to drop them off at a electronic depot facility or a recycling plant or, or something so they do not go into our landfill. Okay, so batteries. I also have some brass. I do have to take the little washer off this, but I have a bag of this. This in Canada right now is actually going for $2.53 for uh, the nice gold brass. Um, there is also brass that you're going to get from uh, wires and cords and things uh, like this. So plugs, you can see there's the metallic look. This is actually nickel plated and actually the nickel plated uh, brass right now is also going for about 240 to 250 a pound. So brass is a great thing. Um, it's easy to collect. I actually take the prongs off of my cords and I will throw that into um, a bin and it will add up, okay? And speaking of wire, I don't have any of this to go in yet, but when I was talking about um, cords and plastic uh, to copper ratio, this cord would actually be 40% copper recovery because there is an outside plastic coating inside there will be two prongs or three prongs that have individual plastic around it as well so because it has a higher plastic content it's going to give me a lower price but still a dollar 23 for cords like this um, that is part of the reason why a lot of times on garbage day you will see people drive by and just take the cords off of vacuum cleaners and other appliances because it's a quick buck okay but clean brass and you're nickel plated. The last one I'm bringing in, my money maker, copper right now, is a wonderful price. I have three different kinds. I have a really nice copper pipe here, and I have more of it that's going, but this is uh, four and a half pounds. This right now would be classified as number one copper, um, which is going for $3.90 Canadian, which is amazing. Um, this here is your highest paid copper. This is called Bare Bright, and this is classified right now as, or uh, categorized at, or priced at $4.09 a pound. And one thing I do want to say with that is, I've had some subscribers ask me, um, you know, because I've had other nice looking Bare Bright material, um, how come that would not be classified as Bare Bright? And I'm looking around, I don't have any right now. Oh, yes I do, in this bag right here. So for example, this looks like Bare Bright. It's the same color, it's shiny, it's beautiful looking, like a new penny, all right, right here. Um, the problem is though, or the rule is, if the strand is smaller than 16 gauge, which is another way to look at it, the thickness of a pencil lead, so if it's less than a pencil lead, it is classified as number two copper uh, price. Okay, this is bigger than a copper thread. This is actually coming out of your Romex wire, which is your household wire. Um, so this will be bare bright, okay, which is awesome. So 410 and I have about five pounds of this. Um, this bag right here is just a bag of copper from different motors. Um, that is copper. All of this is less than a pencil thread. And the nice thing about this, it's all number two. Um, this is going for $3.50, it's 10 pounds. So really nice weight there and a nice price for that. And you know, I have a lot of videos on taking apart uh, copper motors and if it's worth it, in my opinion, definitely, definitely worth it because this, all this copper wire pooled up, it adds up and it definitely, uh, over time, it will definitely increase and, Im and definitely increase your profit tenfold. So, I'm hoping now that all of this stuff is going to go into my car. I really hope it does. But uh, another question that I've already answered, I'm answering it again. How I got my name Tin Man is the people at the scrapyard that I go to, Trijan and Sarnia. Shout out to you guys. Um, they were just amazed at how much steel I could fit into my four-door G6 car. Um, so, again, that's how my name came about. Hopefully I can get all this in with a little bit of magic and a little bit of uh, uh, technique. 
Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that helped you sort some of the material. Again, answered a couple questions about where I put my screws. Um, stay well, happy scrapping. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tip Man out.